In my last video where I talked about downgrading Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl from 1.1.2 back to 1.1.1, you guys gave me a ton of views and a ton of comments, which I am so thankful for. But in those comments, some of you guys made some pretty interesting suggestions on how we could actually make it work. So I went ahead and tested them, and believe it or not, some of them do. Hello everybody, Blaine here for Bridge 4 Games. So yeah, we are bringing up this topic again because we have some new information to share. So we are going to be talking about how to get 1.1.2 off your Switch and get Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl running on 1.1.1 again. All right, now before we go ahead and start talking about these methods, I want to make a couple things really clear. So in order to actually do this, you already are going to need to have a copy of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl running on 1.1.1. Now this can be yours, it can be a friend's, colleagues, coworkers, whoever, but you do need access to a working file of 1.1.1. That's really the only way this is able to work. And on top of that, this really isn't going to preserve your save file into a 1.1.1 format. The issue is that 1.1.2 creates a marker in your save file that notes that there is a more recent version of the game if you do manage to downgrade your game to a previous version. So like we covered in the first video, if you go back in time, you know, by deleting all the updates or reinstalling the game, whatever, and you get back to like 1.0.0, it doesn't matter because the game knows that you're on 1.1.2 at some point. So that's why the game forces you to update. It has nothing to do with you being online. So because of that, that is why you need access to a working version of 1.1.1. Now on top of that, these methods are also not going to really be changing your existing save file into 1.1.1. What this video is specifically going to cover is how to get 1.1.1 up and running on your Switch with a new save file. Unfortunately, taking your existing save file and going backwards just doesn't work. However, the one qualification I am going to make is that the last method I'm going to show here is going to be pretty complicated, but it will allow you to have duplicate items and duplicate Pokemon that you can send to your current save file. So I know that's kind of a lot to take in. There are a lot of qualifications here, but we are going to cover a few methods that you guys suggested that do actually work in admittedly kind of a roundabout way for getting 1.1.1 up and running on your Switch. So that being said, now that all that's out of the way, we're going to go ahead and dive right in. But before I do, I just want to take a second to ask that if you like the videos we have here on the channel, please make sure that you actually like them by hitting the thumbs up button. And of course, consider subscribing to the channel to become part of our amazing Pokemon community to make sure that you never miss any of the awesome videos like this one. All right, let's hop in. Now, first off, the reason you need 1.1.1, and here's why I'm going to show you. So the reason you need an existing copy. Now I'm going to show you on Pokemon Shield here. I just, it's the most handy one I happen to have here. So when you go into software update, you can match your version with local users. Now, if you don't have 1.1.1, right? You don't have anyone to match with. So no matter when you delete your game and you go backwards, even if you're on 1.0.0 .0 and you try to update, it's going to take you to the current version, which is 1.1.2. So you need a reference for the game to figure out where you want to send your file to and how to make it 1.1.1. And the way you need to do that is match it with local users. Now, a couple things to keep in mind that are really, really important. If you had played at 1.1.2 and downgraded to 1.0.0, do not, under any circumstances, link with somebody who you have 1.1.1 on their system because if you do because again the file remembers that you were on 1.1.2 it will force them to update their 1.1.1 to 1.1.2 getting rid of one of the available assets that you may have so don't do that the couple methods we're going to cover right now are how you're going to be able to get 1.0.0 up and running on your Switch, and how you'll be able to turn that into 1.1.1 when you do use the match version with local users and get your 1.1.1 version from their Switch. So first and foremost, the one method I did want to talk about. Now, as you can see here on my Switch, this is actually my backup Switch that I use for just kind of experimenting in my backup files. But on here, aside from playing Snipper Clips and Katamari Damachi, I am going to go ahead and put in Pokemon Pearl, Shining Pearl. So. This game is actually not even opened yet. You can see it's still shrink wrapped. So we're gonna open it right now. I don't have a knife handy, so I'm just gonna use a pen. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna put this in. Now, in theory, if I have not updated my game yet, or you know, I haven't upgraded anything, and I'm on airplane mode, I should be able to pop this cartridge in, and we should be able to open up 1.0.0. Now, keep in mind, guys, 1.0.0 does not have the glitches in it. It's only exclusive to 1.1.1. So 
opening your menu glitch, doing things like that do not work. Now the daycare method does work in 1.0.0, but obviously that's a bit into the game and I'm not going to be able to just pop this in in advance seven hours. So I'm just showing you guys how to get to 1.0.0. What you go from, you know, what you do from that point is up to you. Now, I did want to do a couple things real quick. So first off, you can see I'm in airplane mode. We're going to test this out with using airplane mode and then without. So here's the brand new game. Pokemon Shining Pearl is in there. And all right, so this system has never had one of the new Pokemon games on it. I'm going to take the cartridge and put it in right now. All right, and there we see we are on airplane mode. We have our Shining Pearl icon come up. And as you can see, we are on 1.0.0 where we want to be. And we're going to go ahead and just fire it up and see what happens. Now, it didn't know there was an update. I don't know how, but I did update my system. Maybe it got an update then, but we are in airplane mode. So again, we still got it, but we are able to open it which is the important thing here because we don't have that 1.1.2 save file. So I'm going to open up in my main account here and let's just see what happens as we go through it here. And there we go. We finally are on the English screen here so we can pick it. And I believe we're going to be greeted by a very nice Professor Rowan and we'll get to have a little chat before we bail out on this. All right. So now we know that this works for when you have you know, a system that has not had the games on it yet, no problem. Put your game in, you'll be good to go on 1.0.0 as long as you don't update. Now let's see what happens when we connect to Wi-Fi. So something I just realized, apparently my auto update had been turned on when I updated my system, which is kind of unusual. I didn't think it would do that, but as you can see, I have gone down now that we're online and turned my auto updates to off, uh, just because we don't want to, you know, update this thing to 1.1.2 and then I'm stuck with that whole problem, so... As you guys can see here, uh, auto update software is turned off, which you want to do in this method because you don't ever want to have your stuff start to upgrade because you could lose some stuff that you want to keep on there. So now we are connected to the internet. I'm going to go ahead and put my game back in. And if I'm right, I think it's going to tell us we have an update available, but it is not going to force us. And the reason why we don't have save files that are more new. So that is the really big kind of issue here. So let's go ahead and pop that in. And as we can see, we have our new uh, Pokemon Shining Pearl here. And we're gonna, and again, we are on 1.0.0. Connected to the internet, let's try and play it. A new update is available. It will be downloaded now. No, it won't. We're gonna start the software. And again, I'm going to start myself as myself. And let's see what happens here. So I'm gonna let the game load up and hopefully we will see this hilariously bad intro screen here, which I didn't see before. We just saw English, but if you guys have not booted up 1.0.0, there's not the nice Dialga. It just says Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, like press start or Shining Pearl in this case, excuse me. So I'm going to be real sad if we don't see that. Oh, dang it. All right. Well, English. Yes, we'll start in English. And we get to see Professor Rowan. Okay, cool. Now, again, guys, the glitches are not on 1.0.0. You do need to upgrade it to 1.1.1. .1 .1. But one method is taking a brand new Switch that has not had the games on it yet, putting the cartridge in, and you will be able to play 1.0.0, which then you can freely upgrade to 1.1.1, no problem. Now, let's go ahead and test method two. All right, now, as you guys can see, this is my sort of daily driver Switch. This is the one I use for all my streams so far, all my recording of videos so far. And as you can see, I have Pokemon Brilliant Diamond on here. Uh, this is my normal main copy. And as you can see, this has been upgraded to 1.1.2. So... Obviously, I am SOL trying to get this thing back to 1.1.1. But what I want to know is, what if you don't need a brand new Switch? What if you're able to just put in another game copy instead of Brilliant Diamond, now I have Shining Pearl? What if we're able to put this in and not upgrade it? Now, the reason I want to know about this one, first off, let me go ahead and switch to airplane mode. All right, there we are, much better. And just to confirm, we're still in it. There we go, airplane mode on. So the reason I wanted to do this, I want to see if... Now, we know from the coding of the game that Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are effectively the exact same games when it comes to code. And in the code, there's sort of a switch that just changes the exclusives from the Brilliant Diamond ones to the Shining Pearl ones. Now, I am going to wonder if the game or the system is going to force us to update this when it knows that I have a save file for the other, you know, version of the game. So, again, Brilliant Diamond has been updated all the way. I'm going to go ahead and put Shining Pearl in, and then we're going to see if it makes us update it or if I'm allowed to play it on 1.0.0. Then when this is done, I'm also going to do it connected to Wi-Fi to see, again, if that makes any difference, which I don't think it does. I don't think that's the real key here. So I'm going to go ahead and put Shining Pearl into this switch for the first time. 
actually haven't even played this game before today. I'm super excited to finally play it and get Palkia. But as we can see here, uh, so again, version 1.0.0, let's boot it up. So now, okay, this is interesting. It knows an update is available because of Brilliant Diamond being in there, but it's not gonna force me to update. So we can start the software. And again, let's just go ahead and get into it and see what happens here. Um, again, you know, this does allow us to play on 1.0.0. So you would need to link to a console to upgrade to 1.1.1, but it does look like for all intents and purposes, the game is keeping those files separate, which is awesome. So that's really what you want because that way, if somebody decides to upgrade, in my case, my Shining Pearl to 1.1.1, they're not going to get wrecked and have to force upgrade because I happen to have that Brilliant Diamond file on there. So now we're going to go ahead. Obviously, you know, we're playing this. We're going to say hi to Professor Rowan and, and GTFO. So, all right. Hey, what's up, boss? All right, cool. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go ahead and take my game cartridge out, and I'm going to do pretty much the same thing I did before. The only difference is I'm going to go ahead and, you know, pop off of Wi-Fi or hop off of airplane mode and turn my Wi-Fi on. So let's go ahead and we're going to delete the the uh, game data. OK, so we got rid of that. Awesome. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead. I don't want to play Among Us right now. It is an awesome game, but, you know, there's a time and a place. Let's go ahead and turn airplane mode off. OK, so now, as you guys can see, I am freely connected to the Internet right now with my wonderful low battery there. And let's go ahead. I'm just going to make sure again, auto updates are turned off because we don't want to get, you know, accidentally wrecked when this thing, you know, kind of decides to update on us here. So again, we have them off. Wonderful. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead. We are connected to Wi-Fi. We see that. Let's go ahead and pop Shining Pearl in and let's see again, just kind of what happens. All right. So we have Shining Pearl again. We're just going to confirm 1.0.0. Let's go ahead and open her up. And again, a new update is available. It will be downloaded now. No, it won't because we're starting the software. So as we can see, as long as you have not had a 1.1.2 save file, you're able for that particular game, you are able to bring these new games in and get them up and running as long as you have not, you know, saved in a more newer version. So this does get us running on 1.0.0, which will again, let us upgrade to 1.1.1. Now, in the beginning, I did say there was a method that, while it does not preserve your save data, it does let you send all of your, you know, infinitely duplicated Pokemon and items to your newer games. It is a method that's repeatable. Now, I'm going to warn you, it's a very big pain in the rear end, but we are going to do it right now. All right, everybody. So this is going to be the repeatable method for you to use this sort of technique we've been seeing so far to create as many duplicate Pokemon and items as you want and send them to your main save file. Now, the problem here, guys, again, I realize this method is not practical. I don't really think this is the most... Look, if you want to make just infinite Pokemon of, you know, any kind of specificity, there are other ways to do it, which I'm not going to get into, but you can probably figure out where I'm going with this. That being said, if you specifically want to use in-game glitches to make as many Pokemon as you want, this is pretty much the only way to do it that we have, you know, available to us right now. If your game has been saved to 1.1.2. If you're still on 1.1.1, thumbs up. You can, you know, duplicate your Pokemon as much as you want, but this method will be a real pain in the butt, but it will allow you to make as many duplicates as you want and send them to your 1.1.2 games. Now, in order to do that, you need your main console. And again, you need a version running 1.1.1. And for lack of a better word, we'll say the uh, sacrificial lamb here because it's going to be one that needs to be factory reset. So basically the way this is going to work, you need to either have, you know, a system that's brand new like we just had now or one that had 1.1.2 and you need to run a factory reset on it. Now, if you guys are unfamiliar with kind of what that is, I'm going to actually go to it now. So under settings, one of the options you have available to you, I believe it's under system, if I'm not mistaken here. It's kind of at the bottom. Okay, formatting options. Uh, so my head is kind of out of the way there. And you can see here, uh, where is it? Reset cache, no, no, no. Initialize console, yeah. Okay, so initialize console. What this means is you have factory reset your console. So if you click this, there's a big exclamation point in there for a reason. Basically, this will turn your switch into an out of the box model. So it will delete all your videos, all your, you know, save data. It'll delete everything and turn it into a stock model. Now, you know, really that's just purging everything on there. 
to make it into kind of what we covered so far, being like a clean switch you can put the game into and get it running on 1.0.0. So when you want to start this method, which again, I know is not practical, but again, I did want to cover it because it is possible. So going to this, you need to again, factory reset that or get a clean switch that is running no previous games and put your game into it. Now, next method. You put the game in, make sure you're running on 1.0.0, and then you need to save your game, and then use the other system to update that version to 1.1.1. Now, at that point, you will have a version running of 1.1.1 that has all the glitches in there that we are going to use again as our gifting system, let's say, because we're going to have to probably format this again. Now, what you're going to want to do clone and you know create all the items you want all the pokemon you want get that up and running as quick as you can i know you know obviously starting a new file is going to be a real pain in the rear end but there are a lot of pokemon available to you and once you get the master ball you can clone that or duplicate that so basically you need to do as much as you can in one shot now when that's all done you're going to upgrade this to 1.1.2 now I, I know i know this sounds crazy just bear with me because there is a reason why if you try to trade with a 1.1.2 system and you're on an earlier version again, it's gonna try and force that system to upgrade. So what do we wanna do from here? We wanna go down to our next step, which is once you've upgraded it, trade all those clones into your main console. Now this way on your main game that has been upgraded to 1.1.2, you will get all of your clone Pokemon and your duplicated items from your, you know, sacrificial lamb game version. So this will bring all of those created Pokemon and created things into your main normal game. Now, obviously, once that's done, we're kind of stuck because the console we use to gift all those things away is now on 1.1.2. So what you're going to have to do is go ahead and refactory reset the console and then repeat this method as necessary. So again, I realize this method is not practical. It is frankly a little ridiculous, but if you do want to use glitches and you don't want to use any external methods to create, you know, duplicated Pokemon, duplicated items, the way you will have to do that is effectively getting a system on 1.0.0, putting it on 1.1.1 using that 1.1.1 gifting system, and then upgrade after you have all your cool stuff to 1.1.2, trade it off, and then reset it again. So, look, I'm going to be honest with you guys, this is a major pain in the butt because you, you have to keep duplicating it, you know, this way. Another option, I suppose, that I didn't put in here, if you have a bunch of cool Pokemon in the system gifting you the 1.1.1 upgrade, you could duplicate them all in there and then trade them into this system and upgrade that and trade it over. But effectively, you end up with the same situation where you end up with a game on 1.1.2 that you don't want to have 1.1.2. So you are going to have to end up factory resetting it, getting back to basically a stock version and going from there. So... Look, I know this is a pain in the butt, but again, a lot of people did want me to cover this because a lot of people were actually excited that this option was available to you. And now you guys know how to do it. So if you find this helpful, I am glad. If you guys, you know, just found it entertaining watching me try to, you know, run a maze around Nintendo's, you know, updates here, I I'm glad you enjoyed that too. But again, there is a way to get 1.1.1 running on your Switch, even though it's not easy or practical. And again, I didn't, I don't want to advertise this as being easy or practical, so I want you guys to know exactly what you're facing here. But again, if you're really into this and you want to make sure you're able to do this, it is something that is available to you. And I hope you're able to use this guide to, you know, get that up and running if you want to. All right, so there you have it, everybody. That is how you're going to be able to get your systems running back on 1.1.1 for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. And normally I would say no must, no fuss, but there is a lot of mussing and fussing here because there are a lot of steps involved. Now, again, I don't expect you guys to necessarily run out and do this because, again, it is a process that's going to cost you upwards of $1,000 to pull off in order to get those three switches and to have multiple copies of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. But that being said, for the people out there that were really interested in doing this, I hope you guys found the video helpful and I hope you found it entertaining. And most importantly, I hope you're able to use it to get all the duplicated Pokemon you want because, as we say here on the channel, the best Pokemon games are the ones that you love to play and the proper ways to play them are however you have the most fun.
So that being said, everybody, I've been Blaine from Bridge 4 Games. Thank you all so much for stopping by and hanging out with me. Again, if you did like the video, please make sure that you absolutely get, get impact that like button in the face. And again, consider subscribing to the channel to become part of our amazing Pokemon community to make sure you never miss any of the awesome videos like this one. I hope each and every one of you have an awesome, epic, and amazing day. And I will see you in the next video. See you around. Bye-bye.